So welcome to this efficiency currency. And this is talking about new forms of economies. It's a one year pilot to start to try and look at a new form of economics. And uh, why would I want to do that? Sufficiency currency is the name of this. Why would I want new forms of economics? I don't think I should be the one to have to tell you that we are up a creek like this Lego guy with no paddle. And I would say if we're looking at it, you can see that there's enough food for people. There's enough shelter in the world, not just in your country or if you're watching this, but there's really enough. But somehow everybody's in this stress of working extra jobs and never sort of having enough and trying to afford their kids education or even just not being able to get by at all. And it seems that the more we, or abundant our society is, has become, the more inequality there's been and the more people are struggling in all classes. And something is fundamentally wrong with that, the economics of that. Why should anybody be struggling if there's actually enough? And so alongside market economics, and I'm not going to discuss whether it's good, bad, or ugly, it's, it's a system that's gotten us tremendous wealth for everybody. Well, alongside what I think we need is a pool. And a pool is different from a market. We just share. So here's a pool of food. We would just share it among ourselves. Or this is one of these free clothing places. Like there's so much stuff. Just take it. And how would we distribute if we were going to create a new form of economy that said there were these things called pools and pools is for everything. I'm going to call that the life support system, things that you need and that people at least they get up to this basic minimum of things they need. So it's not like UBI. It's not free money necessarily. It's making sure everybody's got food on their table. It's making sure everybody has basic health care. The fundamental, again, you could call that communism, but it's not communism. It's just common sense. If we have enough food, nobody should starve. Should you have to work for your wages? Probably if you're an adult, you should have to contribute to society. But if you're a child or an old person or whatever, there's plenty of people we know aren't free riders and they should be taken care of. And I think children is probably the best example. Just because my parents are losers or drug addicts or whatever, doesn't mean a child should starve, be deprived of health care, be deprived of education. So this is the idea of the pool. So how would that look? Well, one of the things is we're already seeing this movement. In fact, we have the communes of the 60s, but we have this resurgence of intentional communities, peer-to-peer -peer commons, cooperatives. In Europe, this has always been a big movement. And we're seeing a reemergence of those movements um, where people are sharing their resources, both to reduce waste. Like there's, a, for example, in, um, in, in uh, Belgium, there's a community of people who have 1,000 families but 100 cars. And it just saves resources in the city, right? Or I think it's in Ghent. And, and then, or, you know, cooperatives where we all share our food together and we distribute it locally. Eco villages where people live together and they try to restore the land and they share, right, together. So those are local, but what would happen if we were able to take five or 10 of those groups or even all of those groups, right, and put them under this sufficiency currency? So I'm working on a one year pilot. Hopefully it'll be successful and it'll be a three year ongoing project and then it'll be something that really transforms our economies. But the first year of looking at how do we create some software that instead of being a trade like a mutual credit or let's or any of these other types of community currencies where you trade, it's a system of a pool. And every group would um, be able to say, what they're what they've got you know we've got this much food or we've got a storefront or we've got whatever we've got and then we share among ourselves and you could say things like oh well based on our predictions for right now we're going to be short this much money or we're going to be short this much um uh, this much grain or we're, we need a plumber whatever those things are and plan together how to deal with that problem, just like you would inside the eco village, but as a group of, let's say, five group, five communities. This would allow much more balances because you could get different types of communities sharing. The other thing it would create is the growth of the movement. Right now, it just it's like these little flotillas. So what would our, on our model look like? That's what the idea behind the sufficiency currency. And you could imagine that these would be regional things and you could bring more and more communities inside of this sufficiency thing, right? And the second thing that we would wanna measure so, uh, so this is the one year pilot, right? And here I am, I'm going to these different um, eco villages and communities. It's gaining a lot of support. The um, European 
uh, Association for Eco Villages is interested. So this is making progress, and you can find that on the website. I'm going to be blogging about it weekly, so you can see how the progress is going. And there's three measures. One is our what we've got and what we need, so the basics what we're producing. Capacity means how many people we could adopt. So it might be something like you know we noticed that a lot of money last year went to carpentry. Maybe does anybody have a room for a family? And maybe if one of the parents is a partner, we can reduce our dependence on money and we can adopt people or we've got enough land um, that we could adopt two or three more families as long as they're able to, to be participants in the economy or you know workers in the economy whatever that might look like right so that's capacity and those kind of go together um, so like I said you might need work you know you might need a carpenter or a plumber or a lawyer but not as one individual community but as a group of 10 communities you might need a lawyer or something like that so that's how sufficiency and capacity would work together. And reputation would allow the interaction among these communities. I won't talk about that at this point, but that's the next step, right? Is instead of saying you're either in the group or out of the group, the different communities themselves can vet one another based on their values. Reputation isn't just like good, bad. It's like, are you good at this? Um, what are your values? Are you a religious community? Are you a carbon neutral community? All those things, right? Um, and um, the measures of success would be the needs met. How many people's needs are we making? Are we reducing our uh, dependence on outside, um, on monetary systems, on um, on gas, on you know buying stuff, right? Are we becoming more independent? Uh, increase in population, that is, the idea of sufficiency, as I said at the beginning, is to make sure people get fed. Are more people joining the movement and being able to live in this ecological way, being able to take care of one another from different demographics, right? So the increase in the movement would be one of the things. Um, and that there's a reciprocity. We feel good about each other. There isn't this resentment starting to build up against that community that doesn't um, do its share or whatever that might look like. So those are the success measures that I'm going to be looking at. Um, the difference between this and some of these other um, no money economies, buy nothing economies, sharing economies is that it's not individual. You're represented by a community. Um, my, one of the things that I'm postulating is in the future, you'll be able to choose your community of value. So you might choose a community that doesn't allow free riders, that even no matter what age you are, you have some contribution to the community. That might be your values. Or you might belong to a community that says, listen, if we can't get people to do it, we build robots to do it and we all sit on our butts. And that might be the community that you feel comfortable with. So that everybody chooses their community of value and the things that you have to share come out of those values, right? And so that your community represents you vis-a-vis -vis the other communities. You don't represent yourself as an individual. And this really allows people to belong to communities that share their values and allows collaboration at large scale without this individualistic measure of running after one another. No, I belong to a community and that community has its values and we take care of each other in the community. Um, so that's really the difference, and it's not a reciprocal exchange. There is kind of a karma, I call it karma level, right, reputation. We feel that community's participating at a reasonable level, and that's different for every community because a community of hackers and a community of farmers or a community that's new versus a community that's established, we have different ideas of what each community should be contributing. The next thing is, uh, this is me. I've been in technology for 30 years. Those are my offspring. Uh, I'm Israeli, I'm American, I live in Slovenia. I've been in the crypto world for about three years. I teach about governance, about currency design. Um, I've worked on several hundred projects in the community, in uh, the cryptocurrency community. So I've seen a lot of this, what works and what doesn't work. So, um, so the funding mechanism for this, I'm looking to four to five families, high net worth families who are looking for a year in Europe at one of these intentional communities, learning about permaculture. There's also, of course, a personal development element. We'll be having four workshops throughout the years um, dealing with, OK, how do we live in community? What does that look like? So there's that interpersonal relationship thing, which um, you know, really helps with the self-development. The second is 
okay, what is permaculture? What is uh, eco-village living? What would that look like if I were going to create my own community? And it's really just a year-long program. You come on an educational visa. We take care of you. And um, so we're, we're looking for four to five families who are interested in, there's an application process. You can find it on our website. And uh, one year in Europe could be awesome. Um, so the website is voiceofhumanity.one. This is the Sufficiency Currency Project. I'm Grace Rahmani. Uh, this is all the information you need in order to contact me. Thank you.